More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the heart. We are live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I'm Gary Bailey. And this is Pastor Dave Landis and Pastor Dave Candoli. Exactly. And this is the Holy Ghost Forum. Forum. <laughs> and uh, what we mean by that is we're just going to talk about the things of the Spirit, the things of God, the things of the Word of God, and just uh, talk back and forth and allow the, the Lord to speak to us and Amen. through us and, and just uh, bring revelation to us. I, I don't know if you guys have noticed sometimes when you're preaching or when you're talking, sometimes an idea or something will rise up on the inside of you mm. that you, you never thought of before. Well, we're, we're called to speak as oracles of God. Yeah. 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 Oracle the, gifts, so God uses our vocal cords. Our vocal cords, <laughs> sure. Okay, my I mean, I've been preaching already, I think, wow. You say something like, I hope that's true. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, what's it say? A righteous man teacheth... Uh, his mouth teacheth him, or something. Yeah, uh, something, yeah, something like Proverbs that. says that. My wife and I were just, uh, you know, sharing while I'm driving, coming here to our studio here, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're exchanging. And um, she brought up about unction, and uh, because re lately we'll be ministering to a lot of people, a lot of believers, because at this time, yeah, a lot of believers need a lot of encouragement, and um, and couples, and but then. Uh, you know, you depend. You have to depend on the unction. But she mentioned the word uh, "unction for action." Unction a, for yeah, Ooh, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, I thought, man, <laughs> you know, that's a good quote. Unction for because, like, you sense a flow, you sense an urge, you sense an. Mm. That's and not only a sermon title. That's a whole program. Yeah, <laughs> unction for then, action. And then that's you a series for me. Yeah, yeah. And, you <laughs> and you flow out of your spirit. Yeah, and that's why I love the Holy Ghost Forum because I really don't have to prepare too much to sweat at home, yeah. just pray in the Holy Spirit, meditate, uh, yeah. whatever the Lord is putting on my spirit, and then come and let the Holy Spirit flow. And, and you pull from that reservoir exactly. that's on the inside of you. You know, each one of us has spent hours, uh, weeks, months, and years uh, taking time to get the Word of God into us and. And it's amazing some of the things that come out. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, um, one thing I wanted to talk about here, um, and we can, I don't know where the Lord will lead us, but uh, um, Rick Warren wrote a book years ago about the, about the local church. And, you know, he's kind of a controversial fi figure. Some of them, some people like him a lot, some not. You know, he's a Baptist uh, man and uh, but he, uh, uh, the title of his book was Purpose Driven Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came up with uh, basically five things, which, uh, you know, I'm not going to criticize the book. I think it was, it had a lot of good content in it for the most part. Uh, some people uh, criticized some of the things in the book that they didn't like. But, but there are five, uh, five fundamental principles that he put forth as far as the purpose of a church. And um, he, uh, he had worship, teaching and preaching, uh, fellowship, discipleship, and evangelism. Huh. Those five things. You can't, you can't argue with those things as far as what the believer needs to do or what he should be doing. Uh, but uh, I was listening the other night uh, uh, to uh, an evangelist from California. You guys may know him. I, I, he's one of my favorite guys, uh, Mario Morello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, I get uh, his blogs. Yeah, he, he's a radical. He's right. <laughs> he always comes from a little bit different yeah. angle, you know. Yeah. To, you know, he said here recently, people have been criticizing him for, for getting into politics. You know, he says, but if uh, you know the church is called uh, to stand up for righteousness, righteousness yeah. and if that's the case, we need to deal with some of the wickedness and some of the yeah. evil that we're we're facing. But he uh, he brought this idea, and I thought it was great because, and and I've I've certainly seen this uh, previously, uh, but uh, he uh, um, 
he mentioned about Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Church. He said, I'm not going to criticize that, but uh, what we need to realize as Christians is that we don't need to look at our individual purpose. We need to look at God's purpose. For instance, if you have a recruit in the Marines and he's standing uh, um, in front of his sergeant, you know, in the military, and the and the uh, sergeant yells out, he says, "Why are you here?" <laughs> and he says, <laughs> and he says to him, "To find out what my purpose is." <laughs> And then after he's been, be after trouble. he's recovered from yeah, yeah. being blown back about ten feet, and you know, a black eye, or, or uh, you know, uh, been roughed up a little bit, he realizes the sergeant speaks up. And he says, "You're not here to find your purpose. You're here to find the Marines' purpose. It's, it's our purpose that you need to be interested in. Yeah. We own you." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And that's what Mario was saying about the church. Um, we have no other purpose than what our purpose exactly. is in Christ Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. Our purpose is His purpose. Yeah. And you, you know, know just of, does he talk about the hope of His uh, <laughs> calling, the whole co uh, hope of His that we may know? Yeah. Yeah. Something like and, that. And uh, the first, uh, the first thing he brought up was was First uh, John three eight. Mm. Um, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So our purpose in Christ Jesus is not to find, you know, do this little thing or that. Our purpose is his big purpose. When While we're on the earth is to destroy the works of the devil. Greater work shall you do. Yeah, and that includes... You know, of course, uh, that includes sickness and disease. That includes demonic possession. But that also includes wickedness in high places, yeah. wickedness uh, in politics. Right. Mm. And uh, the gobbledygook that's going on in our nation. Someone needs to stand up and say, this is not right. We stand up for righteousness. But yeah. Why? Because we want to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not everybody's called to be a Daniel uh, facing lions in a lion den or like the three Hebrew children facing a fire or, or Mordecai facing the death of a whole nation. But uh, I believe God will raise up people to stand for righteousness yeah. and pull down the works of the enemy. I mean, right now, uh, there's a count, uh, there's a group out, and there's probably several other groups, J along with Jay Seculo, and there's a something called the Liberty Council. But there's been several pastors already arrested yeah. and facing mm -hmm. facing a year in jail, facing thousand dollar fines, not only pastors but people that have showed up to a church yeah. simply to attend it mm. and uh, you know what are we supposed to do, just roll over and say well yeah. the government knows what they're doing, no. <laughs> I don't think so, no, I don't think so either uh, we have to stand up and this is if this is not a work of the devil, I don't know what is well, the yeah. devil knows if two or three of us gather together in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. He, mm. Yeah, that's what he, he can't handle. He's it. To, he wants to stop the gathering of the exactly. saints. Exactly. Yeah. We're a powerful force when we get together and mm. agree. It's yeah. touching anything, he said. Yeah. And I don't know of a church in this nation, Pastor Dave, that hadn't been impacted by this whole yeah. rigmarole with the uh, pandemic and the politics and yeah. the governors. Uh, yeah. They've all been affected. People, let, churches have closed, literally closed right. their doors for good. Some of them closed for a period of time. Yeah. Some of them lost, uh, you know, members. Some of them lost money, uh, you know, all, all along the way. Some, you yeah. know, some are doing all right. But uh, the point is, there's an attack on the church yeah, right the, now. Yeah, the devil's used us. Used yeah. that so. COVID thing to shut the church up. Yeah. So keep, keep us from gathering. For example, um, I come from Uganda. That's how uh, um, I'm from uh, doing mission work here, but um, growing up in in Uganda, there was a lot of there's a lot of dictator, dictator after dictator, oh, yeah. throwing government, and uh, was it Idi Amin? Uh, yes, one of your doing that, and dictators. then and then other dictators came out of that. But do you know, do you know who stopped that that whole thing? And millions died. It was the church, mm. the church. See the the 
wow. and the church when the, the apostles of those, those days started speaking out uh, publicly against injustice and, uh, there and you the go. wickedness yeah. that the Idi Amin started slaughtering and killing the pastor and the pastor rose up and went underground and they start praying and mobilize the church you know i come from that place those yeah. who, who interceded during that movement yeah and the church when you went <laughs> went underground and then those who are called the apostles to challenge yeah the, the leaders and, and of you know the, the book of acts was just like that yes. because when the church scattered the apostles remained in jerusalem exactly. And they stood up and said, we're going to preach Jesus. Exactly. And they did it in the face of, yeah. and it, of it, death, it, in the face of prison. I know pastors who were locked up and others died in ministers. And yeah. then uh, the, the government announced no more born again, spirit-filled, charismatic, Pentecostal, only Catholics wow. and, uh, and, and, and Muslims. Mm -hmm. And the church rose up and literally... The church is what brought the, ch the change. They did not just Sit quiet. I, I, I kind of watch sometimes <laughs> all these things that they put on. Now the church, Mauro Mar Murillo mentioned this in one of his blogs, and he said the latest one, and I agree with it. The reason why th this system in the government, and different people, rulers are doing about shutting the church, and don't sing, don't do this, don't do that, it's one reason they know the church is divided. Yeah. yeah. Because if the church had one voice, at least we could st we stand on one yeah. principle: yeah. that preaching the gospel. You cannot stop us from worship, from preaching, from witnessing, yeah. and we have one voice. They will not do it. Now they know there's an opening. The church have been so divided. Yeah. So when they say shut down, and we say no. They're going to find another percentage of the church yeah. leaders. They're going to say, no, we need to obey. So we are divided. Yeah. We cannot challenge yeah. the, that spirit of the day. A lot of people don't realize that Hitler um, used this same tactic to quell and quiet the right. Christians uh, for Nazism to yeah. rise. Because I think he knew as well, as long as a church uh, has one voice and is going to speak up, uh, his movement wasn't going to wasn't going to work. So he he actually used. I'm going to read this scripture from Romans chapter 13. Uh, he used this scripture to bring the church into submission under Nazism, and yeah. a lot of people thought they were as Christians doing God's service by serving Nazism and and serving the state. But listen listen to this scripture, and we're going to at least I want to, and you guys mm. can. Uh, chime in here um we're going to see exactly what this means and mm. and how to apply it what is a what are we to do are we to obey the government when when it comes to social distancing when it comes to masking when it comes to not worshiping not gathering in church what i mean this is mandates from the government what 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 are we to do and uh this is what uh Romans says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. Well, if you just read that far, uh, you know, we need to be subject to all the powers, all the authorities, that uh, because they're all ordained of God. Now let's read on here. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Doesn't look very good so far. However, let's go on here to verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works. There's a big key right there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that tells me right there that good leadership, the leadership that Paul's talking terror. about, is... Uh, is not a terror to good works. They're not. They're not uh, shutting down good works. And the church is good works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The church is a good thing. So he says, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Uh, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Now the problem is, 
people are trying to do that which is good it's good to praise the lord it's good to worship god it's good to to preach and teach and share the gospel in god's eyes but if you have a government that's saying it's not good then you've got a topsy-turvy government you have to because uh, once they come against what we know is the truth and what is good and what is good what is ordained by God and commanded by God then we have to obey God rather rather than man yeah and we're not obligated to obey this scripture uh, in the light of verse uh, verse 3 and 4 he says for he is a minister of God to thee for good Uh, but if thou do that which is evil be afraid for he beareth not the sword in vain for he is a minister of God or avenger to execute wrath upon all them that doeth evil so what if you've got a government that's doing evil instead of people doing evil so it doesn't really apply to us it doesn't apply to us at all we have to throw it out and some people uh, well I don't know how they'd argue, but some people do argue that we just blindly follow the government regardless, but that is not but Peter, Peter, what the Scripture Peter says. Peter and the Apostle, they didn't blindly. No. Because uh, when the, they said, you, you are not going to speak in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ anymore over anyone to anyone, that was the same way of shutting the church. Yeah. They're not directly saying you can't say the name of Jesus, but they are saying no gospel. In other words, they're saying we do not see the gospel as valuable yeah. and you cannot do that yeah. so in a subtle way in America it's hard for them to come and say you can't preach yeah. so they have to come that spirit it have to come in a come very subtle way. way but yet actually they muzzled everybody instantly yeah yeah. in other words the, the way the government's come around saying hey this is for your own good we're trying to keep you healthy we're yeah. trying to keep you well so we're going to limit uh, your movement. We're going to put a mask on you. We're not even going to allow you to gather together because we're doing this for your own good. And it's really a subtle, it's, it's the craftiness of the devil. It's yeah. the, uh, what, how's the Bible say uh, about the devil? He, uh, um, anyway, he's, a, he's, yeah. he's crafty. He's subtle. He's subtle. subtle. That's word. And uh, uh, we, need to, we need to come you know we need to recognize that for for instance uh, now we know what good laws are in good government I'll give you an example of people uh, uh, people rebelled against a law that was good and eventually it came around saw hey this is a benefit to society and when I grew up uh, there were no seat belt, seat belt laws you didn't have to wear a seat belt in fact they didn't even have them in no. cars they didn't and so I mean there'd be a state policeman riding behind our car and we'd be up in the back window waving yeah. to them, you know, as kids. <laughs> you know, or, or riding in the back of a pickup truck, you know. Yeah, right. But uh, someone realized, hey, uh, there's a lot of people getting killed because they're not restrained. Mm. And so the government put into, uh, uh, made a law. Safety measures. Uh, said everybody needs to wear a seatbelt. Well, a lot of people rebelled. There was a guy in Clarion of where my <laughs> wife was uh, born. He was a judge. And uh, he refused to wear a seatbelt. He just didn't want it. You know, he'd yeah. been all those years yeah. without one. And so when they'd stop him, he'd look for a seatbelt. He'd cut him out, you know, because he didn't. He was a judge, you know, <laughs> but he didn't want to wear a seatbelt. Uh, he so, cut his seatbelts out of the car. Yeah, he cut the seatbelts <laughs> out of the car so they couldn't say a word to him about that. <laughs> There's no seatbelts here. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So today, I mean, they can charge you. If they stop you, they can't stop you for not wearing a seatbelt, but they can charge you mm. something else the for, yeah, for not wearing a seatbelt. But when you look at the law as a whole, you say, well, that's not such a bad law. Yeah. That's a good law because it's most likely saving lives and helping people. Uh, you know, another another good law is they decided, you know, they finally came around and decided that cigarettes were bad for you. Mm. And so they stopped advertising those on television. And, and uh, you know, you say, well, that's coming against our free speech. But, but if you look at the big picture, it's not good to smoke cigarettes. So there's some laws that mm. maybe seem to maybe go crossways of our rights, uh, you know, in our person or rights to free speech, that kind of thing. But there's still good laws because they're helping people and promoting life. Now, 
you go another route and you look at uh, there's a law on the books today it was formed in 1973 called the uh, the right to to choose mm. uh, the right to have an abortion yeah. now that's not uh, that's not a, a law that promotes life it's not a law that promotes good things or goodness uh, it's it's evil and wicked to kill babies inside the womb it's evil and wicked now they've got some laws uh, uh, up to the point of birth right they can uh, perform an abortion New York State just did that yeah yeah, yeah. and and I don't know if they passed the laws but Virginia, they were talking I about a Virginia or something yeah, I don't know yeah Virginia, Virginia and New York are very similar yeah. in the laws they passed but there was even a law that uh, that said if it was a bot if the baby's born alive and they wanted to perform abortion uh, they they have the right to, to if, if kill that baby even after it's out of the womb. Yeah, uh, that's just it's crazy. Yeah, it's just plain old wicked and evil. And there's a law that hey, this is not promote, pro, promoting good. This is not promoting life. We need to stand up and and fight against it. And so uh, you've got a. You can't be ignorant. You can't just keep your eyes closed and your ears closed. Uh, if we're going to have a godly and a righteous government uh, as Christians, we need to pray for that government, but we also need to be involved to the point where we say, hey, that's not right, or or that's right. And it may take, you know, if it's a good law, it may take people a while to figure out that, hey, this is beneficial, this is helping society. But sometimes the law is in existence and you find out after a few years, hey, this isn't helping anybody. Yeah. This is doing nothing but hurting society. And and so we've got some of these things that people are trying to play around with today. You know, we've got, they're not laws, uh, but they're mandates and some mandates coming up. And, and the, the ones, the big ones I'm referring to are the social distancing. They still don't know what kind of psychological effect that's going to have on children. Yeah. If you raise a whole generation, aren't allowed to touch each other or be yeah. close to each other. Yeah. Uh, a mask, they don't know how that's going to impact. There's, there's no scientific evidence that, that keeps you from getting it. No scientific yeah. evidence keeps you from getting it, and there's no there, there's no uh, knowledge about what impact that's going to have over children or adults or anyone yeah. that you blindly cut off. Uh, people are making Their money and making more masks. Yeah. yeah. So it's a uh, it's a it's not good for your health. It's a spirit yeah. of the. Yeah. It's hard to breathe. I went. I went to. <laughs> I was in. Uh, uh, you know. I do a prayer uh, somewhere at the theater in Lancaster there, and uh, they. You know. They're allowed to do not full capacity. You feel, but they were doing some. Uh, uh, the sight and sound that really great. Actually, they're going to be broadcasting live on the 4th, uh, September 4th, all over the world, pay-per-view, yeah. you know, so uh, really that's a great honor to, to uh, uh, we're letting people know about that. So, uh, but, uh, but to see people do a lot of work in one place, and because it's a mandate wearing these masks, yeah. all the time. All day long for a all day six, long. seven, eight hour shift. Yes, it, it, it's like a, and uh, even at the construction uh, sites, they you know mandated in the yeah. heat yeah. of the day. Now it's yeah, summer, outside, and they're we outside. They're yeah. wearing it's masks. Good. Yeah. What would that? You know, sometimes people have other other stuff they're dealing with uh, in their health, and and you're wearing a mask all day. Yeah, where's the environmentalists at? They're worried about us, you know, breathing carbon dioxide yeah. from the cows farting and things like that. Well, actually, the, I, I don't know if it's the EPA or, or what group it so is stupid. that, or the de, uh, some department that kind of oversees workers, yeah. the oxygen level that's allowable is like 19%, mm -hmm. but these, uh, these masks, when people wear them, it drops down to like 17%. Yeah. And it's not, <laughs> it's not healthy. I mean, the government itself, it's really breaking the, their own... Yeah their own laws and own rules. But this is what I'd say about this whole thing. People are still, you got people, we got to wear masks. And then you got people say, no, we don't have, but time's going to tell yeah. whether this has helped people or hurt people. And even the mental effect of it. You know, um, 
when we talk about social isolation, social distancing, when we talk about the lockdowns that we've experienced, mm-hmm. shutting down businesses. Now, let's let's just look back at the last four months. Has this been beneficial to our nation, or has it <laughs> has it hurt our right. nation? So you've got uh, you know anybody with half sense in one eye realize we we've lost money, we've lost businesses. The suicide rate has never been higher, right? Uh, because of some of this uh, social distance. So what what I'm saying is, Christians, keep your thinking cap on, and uh, think for yourself, and 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 make a choice. Stand up for what's right. I personally uh, don't feel that masks are uh, helpful. I believe that uh, there's been such controversy on it. One says yes, one says no, and. Uh, you got studies that say it's it's a good thing. Studies that say it's a bad thing. I mean, you you watch one and the other, and you. Don't, but in my opinion, I mean, just being a thinking person, I have enough sense to, uh, I believe, realize, uh, in the long run, this is not going to help anybody. Well, there's a wedding up in New England. This is just on the news the other day. They had like 250 people at this wedding. There was a lady there sneezing, coughing on everybody. She's the only one that did not have a mask on. Fifty people got COVID from this woman. And they all had the And mask. all the rest yeah. of them had masks. Yeah. So it it doesn't really protect you anyhow. Yeah. yeah. So really what's the point? Yeah, you it's it's a psychological thing. So one say. person sneezed and got fifty people, 50 people infected. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. A, imagine if one person can <laughs> give a fifty all, people <laughs> a, a COVID Imagine what we could do with the gospel, one person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody else had masks on, so it just shows you that the masks oh, will not protect you. My yeah, God. yeah, and it's, and sometimes, I mean, we're in the midst of it right now, but sometimes you need to maybe have a little experience, a little bit of hindsight, and realize, hey, that was really a dumb idea. Yeah, and uh, you know, like for instance, when Madame Curie um, discovered radium, and then they dis- she discovered two or three other uh, <laughs> other radioactive materials. Well, they thought, boy, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah. They started putting it in. You realize the damage is going on. Yeah, they started putting <laughs> it in like skin lotion. Yeah. They started putting it in tooth drops and eye drops. And then everyone's raving about it. And then, you know, news comes up, somebody's jaw literally drops off his face <laughs> because he was using this radioactive material. And they realized, Hey, maybe this radium stuff isn't such a good idea to apply it to uh, our skin. Uh, and hey, sometimes people have to figure things out. And I, I really think I don't wear a mask to. Or I, I try not as as much as possible not to wear a mask, not to be rebellious or not to uh, be upsetting to people around, but to take a stand to say, hey. Uh, you're getting a little too close to my uh, personal freedoms, mm-hmm. and uh, the 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 Constitution says before any laws were given by any government, we were given certain unalienable right. rights, uh, which means these are rights given by heaven, given by God. Uh, a government has no right to tell you you can have them or not have them, right. and. Uh, and I think it's the Ninth Amendment that even says that even even what's not written in this Constitution, we have certain rights mm-hmm. and freedoms. And at some point, as Christians, we need to stand up for what our rights are and what and what is right. Like Mordecai, when Haman made a decree that everyone should bow and worship him every time, you know, mm-hmm. or bow down every time they passed him by, and Mordecai says. You yep. forget that business. I'm not doing and and that, doing that's that. that's why um, it's important to pray for those who are in authority, like Paul said. Right. Yeah, because uh, if you're going to challenge the powers that be, you better challenge them after you prayed for them. <laughs> if yeah. you are not even caring to pray for those in authority, you will not have authority speaking to them to challenge. You know, the Paul here, the apostle said uh, in First Timothy 2, Therefore I exalt first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings who presidents, mm-hmm. uh, and all who are in authority, all, yeah. that we may lead a, a peaceable, a quiet, a 
peaceable, uh, life in our godliness. See, our prayers will, will create, you know, allow God to work in the leaders to make the right decisions that are godly, that are within godliness and reverence. So, uh, in other words, we, we pray, and then when they, they veer off, then we have authority yeah. to speak, you know. Well, yeah. Proverbs 29, right? Uh, when, the right when the righteous 29. are, yeah, when the, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So we want to we wanna pray for righteous people in places of exactly. authority. Yeah. Exactly. That's, uh, that's the issue. We have some, a lot of unrighteous people in places of authority in, in our country at this know, point. People and who don't, don't care. Who don't even know it. there's a generation yeah. that probably 40 years ago I would say 40 50 years ago you know even not even that far people reverence the church people uh, even those who are not saved they knew you cannot just talk to a pastor or reverend or father like that or a church yeah. they will come even come into church they would remove the heart or they would they were just a s a smoking. They will have Respect. now now for yeah. leaders to even come and challenge and say you cannot worship, you cannot this and shut the church. They should be coming to the church to find out the the wisdom and advice. So that's how far we've come. There's a generation that was not raised in the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. yeah. so much so that they have nothing in them that they can just say, Church, we don't need you. Because they they have no knowledge of God at all, yeah. And they go to sleep and put their pillow, their head on the pillow, as a governor after shutting down a church, and they're still fighting to shut down like that church of McCarthy, that uh, pastor yeah. in McCarthy. I don't care whether you agree with him or disagree. He is the he's a church yeah. of Jesus Christ, and and the county is continually fighting him, yeah. And yet they know they have a lot of. Uh, Members and citizens that go there by the thousands that live in that county. Well, that church in Chicago, the mayor threatened to bulldoze the building down if they kept meeting. Yeah. What what now, kind of authority that's, that's do you think they have? That's an interesting. That's really an interesting <laughs> situation because what if? What if? I'm just giving yeah. you a scenario here. This mayor says we're going to bull down, bulldoze, bulldoze down your bit building, but you get, say, one bold pastor stands up and says, "No, that's not going to happen." In fact, uh, you'll be blind for a season. Yeah, until that's why we gotta be until bold. We say and strong. until we say you can see, or stretch forth your hand toward me, and it turns leprous. You're talking about the Book of Acts now, aren't you? I'm talking about the Book of <laughs> Acts, and I'm talking about the Old Testament yeah, prophets, yeah, exactly. where a young man came to a king who was the king yeah. was a wicked king, and he he prophesied the downfall of his kingdom. The yeah. the altars of Baal turned to dust. The king stretched his hand towards him and, and turned leprous. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're not as familiar with those stories, but there's a story, there's two stories in, in the... Uh, what would happen, say, if uh, you got a leader who says, you need to worship this idol and everybody needs to bow down, and you have someone like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look what, look what, I'm not going to read the whole story because we know what happened. The king threw him into the fiery furnace. They end up surviving the whole thing. They come out. But look at Nebuchadnezzar's response. And this is what we want to see yeah, happen. Turn around. We want to see conversion. Yeah. And in verse 28 of uh, chapter 3, then after <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar had seen the three Hebrew children and a fourth man like that looked like God. the son of God, <laughs> I mean, this changed his world. Yeah. This changed him yeah. uh, night and day. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the, be the God, of, God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they may not serve nor worship any god except their own guard. Therefore, I make a decree. Mm. Do you see how quick God could turn a nation around? He made around? an executive order, right? Yeah. Executive Therefore, order. I'm... <laughs> I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill. That's that's how. See, when we are bold, 
Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm saying. The, these these uh, these churches they're 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 getting their churches shut down. They can't meet together. You can't sing when you get together. Uh, hey, what if someone takes a stand similar to this? Yeah. And uh, and then the governor stands up and say, "Listen, my life's changed. I either resign as governor or I make a new." Uh, new edict <laughs> mandate that says we all get to church and we worship yeah, God. Yeah. So like uh, they, there's a there's a uh, an apostle that he passed away now. It's from Nigeria, uh, Benson in the house. Oh, powerful! Yeah. In the one powerful day, man. there's two areas uh, when he was teaching. He shared years before he, that he passed. In his country, they used to the witches used to come and uh, do their in the, their international gatherings of witches and so yeah. they chose Nigeria and uh, he warned the the leaders don't give them permission to do that because this not the, the this nation this not who we are right. we are we're godly nation we are more ma majority Christian here we don't believe that and I don't think it's good for the government they didn't listen to him and the other people pushed they gave him the permission so they announced their their convention yeah. and of witches, all the witches gathering, yeah. and uh, he prayed, he sought the Lord, and he felt the Lord spoke to him, he gave him the courage. He bought airtime. He <laughs> went on his television uh, program, and he went. He told the nation, "I have a uh, very important announcements to make next week." So everybody tuned in. He said, "I I make an announcement that there's not going to be any." convention of the witches in Nigeria wow. according to my word by the Holy Spirit there is not going to be people thought he was just joking he said I told you <laughs> they will not be yeah. as a man of God they were not going to be any convention here do you know that God God stripped the power from those witches and stuff they canceled their their, yeah. their, their, their thing I was in Nigeria five years ago <laughs> And uh, one of the pastors told me the story, if I can remember it uh, somewhat accurately here, but uh, what happened is one of the head witches that came, I don't know if he was from out of the country or if he was within the country there, and uh, he said, uh, uh, you're not going to have this convention. He says, we are going to have the convention. He <laughs> says, uh, he says uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you choose... Well, this is what he, they're arguing back and forth about this convention. He says, you won't, you won't have it. And then Benson Idahosa said to him, he said, I want you to answer this question. He says, are you a witch? Because if you're a witch, the Bible declares that, that any witch uh, is, uh, should, should die. And uh, if you're a witch, you're going to die. So I'm asking you the question. Are you a witch? <laughs> and the guy wouldn't answer. <laughs> because he knew yeah. spiritual authority. authority. Now, I and, think, and yeah. Benson yeah. Idahosa was expecting the man to drop dead right there and then. Yeah. So he, he, he didn't say a thing. Uh, and what happened, this, this word got to some of the government officials and, and someone that uh, was in charge of allowing... Uh, um, what do you call it, uh, not the passport, but the visas coming into the can country, they rejected uh, all the visas coming into Nigeria that would have carried a, uh, that would be coming for that witch's uh, mm -hmm. convention. So it, they didn't have it. Yeah. They didn't and, have it. But and the thing, that's, that's how, it, it's a boldness that we, we, we lack, that the enemy found an opportune time yeah. Where the church have been stripped and stripped of the power of God, and we not having conviction about the power of God, yeah. about uh, it, uh, even our words. We don't know the, the authority we have. Talking about uh, Idahosa, Benson, uh, the Archbishop, he one time also he shared about how God had taught him about using his authority. The, the, uh, the thieves broke into his his house with the guns mm. and when he woke up and they were already in his living room you know big house and uh they pointed the gun to him they, you know they wanted to rob him and he he woke up 
He, he went right where they were at, straight. He said, we're going to shoot you. He said, this is my house. You have no authority to be in my house. You violated <laughs> my, my domain. This yeah. is my house. You do not have permission. to. He said, we're going to shoot you. He said, you leave this house now before I kill you with my words. <laughs> Okay. That 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 yeah. day it shook me yeah. that yeah. we do not know the authority. authority he, yeah. The, the yeah. They have guns, <laughs> and he said, "Leave my house now before I kill you with my words." Yeah, and that the the force a certain force happened to them. They were so paralyzed, and they all ran and left. Now now think about this for a moment. The Old Testament is filled with stories: Samson killing a thousand. Uh, David slaying Goliath. I mean, the Old Testament has no problem with death. But you say, well, no, brother, we're living in the New Testament. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Let's get over to Acts chapter 5. How about Ananias? And, and, and see what happens uh, about people just <laughs> dropping dead. And Herod falling over dead. That, yeah. that d deny God or come against God. Yeah. Look at Herod, yeah. who is eaten of worms. Uh, then there was a man, Paul was merciful, just struck the man yeah. blind. But, you know, it, it says there were... There were signs and wonders. We always think about healings, but the signs yeah. and wonders were maybe not the healings that would take place, but this kind of stuff we're talking about. Yeah, and uh, there's a man who understood the authority that we really have as Christians. Exactly. Yeah. If we only knew, Brother David. <laughs> if we only knew. Yeah. 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 And, and, we, and listen, some of the things we're talking about, it, hey, maybe we'll be faced with a time where we'll have the opportunity. I think we are going towards that time right now yeah. and I believe actually I've been uh, I've been praying about it and uh, discussing it with some of my friends I think it's we're in a time now we need to see more we need to establish uh, Bible institutes right now in Bible schools that truly teach the authority the authority the dominion yeah. we start we need to start training and raising up a generation that's yeah. going to challenge that spirit of the world, the yeah. demonic force that have been released in the earth. We must have a generation that's ready to walk in the name of Jesus and the power of his word. Yeah. The faith Phew. that really overcomes. We must do it. And, that, and we, should, we need more Bible schools. Yeah. And I believe the Lord is doing that. And we need in our region here. Yeah. So that when that time comes and they say you cannot preach the gospel anymore. You can't do this. We have these men and women that are raised up. They already know their authority, their dominion. And they know their rights as citizens. Yeah. And challenge that spirit. We cannot allow the church to continue sleeping in slumber whenever they give a decree. And we go and hide under a rock. Yeah. Come on, we're more afraid as a church than the people in the world. You know, speaking, of, speaking of Bible schools, uh, <laughs> a book that really, I, I don't know, it changed. And, and I, I, There's so many books that I read as a teenager that really impacted me greatly. And one book was uh, uh, called God Smuggler yeah, uh, cool. by Brother Andrew. Yeah. I don't know his last name, but he was a Scandinavian, right. I think, and and but when he was he told about how when he was a young man he went to bible school to go, before he went into the ministry and uh in their bible school they had a time where they sent them out um uh, either two by two or one and he said didn't give them anything uh any provision or anything he says i want you to go out and share the gospel and believe god for mm. your support and, and so they went out for a week or a couple yeah. of weeks and and every one of those students came back where God provided for them and took care of them. And, and so he had a little, a little taste mm. of, you know, not just, uh, you know, that's what I loved about Rama at the time when we went. Uh, they call it Rama Bible College now, but, uh, or B Bible Training College. Uh, I liked it because it gave us so many practical things yeah. where we could apply God's word to our life. Yeah, yeah. And so later on, Brother Andrew he took it upon himself to smuggle Bibles <laughs> beyond the Iron Curtain. Yeah. And I mean, time and time again, I mean, story is just so exciting. It would just grip you uh, as you read the book uh, because uh, right in front of you, he'd have a suitcase full of Bibles. They wouldn't see him. And they wouldn't <laughs> see him. He'd, he'd walk right past him, you know. 
or he'd have his trunk, his car trunk filled with li- literature and Bibles. And they somehow, you know, the rain was heavy and they ushered them on or it was some some distraction. And, and I mean, he did it time and the time ministry and time of again. Angels. We, are, we, are not, we have not even had more and more and more talk about the ministry of angels. Because I was reading the other time about uh, Acts chapter 5. They put them in jail for preaching the gospel. The angel came in prison and said, get out. And he opened the, the yeah. door and the door was still locked. Yeah. And he said, you go back to the temple yeah. and you tell them yeah. all the things of this life. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you see why we don't, you, you want to know the number one reason we, we don't have angelic activity? Number one reason? You don't need them when you're sitting in front of your television. Exactly. <laughs> You're lazy. You know, they're not coming to they're help. They yeah. come they come to help to assist. Yeah. Yeah. Not to 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 aid uh uh laziness. Yeah. 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 So uh, I think Yeah, my point <laughs> is if, if if we get a generation of of young people that are zealous for good works and zealous to go out there and do the gospel uh, you're going to see some powerful things. My God, take Lord, place. Lord, uh, we ask you for yes. a generation, Lord, and we want to be in a uh, position. We want to be a part of that. We want to yeah. be in a position, Lord, Amen. to uh, we avail ourselves. You desire for us to train, to to establish a training centers and and the institute, Bible institutes, and to raise up this generation, Thank Father. You. We are asking you for uh, this intelligent this generation yes, that you're Lord. raising up father we a generation of the fire and the presence of god and the fire of god and godliness men and women who walk in godliness and and uh, and, uh, and faith mm. and prayer Amen. and power and we call Amen. forth that generation yes. to appear now by the yes. spirit of the living yes. god yes. father Jesus. god raise up an army yes. just yes. like your servant morris ruler yes. always said uh, god's victorious army father yes. we claim that yes, grace Amen. father Thank in jesus Lord. name uh, uh, this end time yes. army that are full of the power of faith yes. full of faith full of the word full of of uh, passion for Communi- f- uh, fellowship with you, Father, yes, in the Holy God. Spirit. And we thank you. We thank you for miraculous signs and wonders and miracles that we, we are moving in right now, Father. We thank you that we are Amen. not going to be afraid and we're not going to be that coward generation. And Father, we pray for thank all you. the pastors and leaders and thank believers you, who are watching mm. now and those thank who you, will watch later in, uh, in you, months Lord. and years. Thank Father, you. we pray in Jesus' name that you, you pour Lord. out your spirit yes. upon them, thank that you release your grace upon Store up, Father God, everyone who is listening. Store up their spirit, Father God. Yes. Make them bold. Fill them with boldness and power to walk in their dominion Amen. and their authority. And Father, we thank you that it's happening now because you said you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh in these last days that our sons and our daughters shall prophesy and our young men shall dream that uh, uh, see vision now old men will dream dreams father that you would do mighty signs and wonders and we believe father and i believe this now and we claim it and we receive it father jesus. in the name of jesus, jesus christ name. thank you father thank you. you know as you're praying there i was thinking when uh David headed off to the encampment where his brother brothers were to bring him some, basically bring him some bread and cheese. Uh, I don't think David was expecting to face a giant. <laughs> when he, he was on delivery, mate, and delivery boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When he left home, he wasn't looking for adventure necessarily, but he had it on the inside of him. Mm. He'd already. Slew the lion. Wow! He'd already sl- slain the bear, yeah. and I think there was something in it. Oh, I'm going to the battle. I, maybe, maybe mm. I can get in the middle of something. I was thinking uh, there's a man John G. Lake wrote about a young man uh, that that got turned on to the word, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and turned on to the word. And he was reading in uh, in Acts chapter 16, "In my name they shall cast out devils." And he told John Lake, he said, do you know where I could find someone that's possessed with the devil? <laughs> he was so so enamored and excited about the possibility mm. that we have authority yes. to cast out devils. And it's like, uh, I, I heard Ken Copeland say this one time, uh, <laughs> you know, every funeral you go to, you ought to at least 
be thinking about. <laughs> this could be pull that guy out of the pull that guy out of the coffin and raise him from the dead. Uh, yeah, I mean Wigglesworth, Smith Wigglesworth, had said that he he wrote, uh, you know, that about twenty eight people somewhere yeah. around oh, yeah. that were raised from the from dead. The day, yeah. So you don't you don't go into those situations. This is where where we need to maybe uh, change our mindset a little bit. You don't go into those situations. Well, nothing ever happens. There's an expectancy. We, expectation, yeah. we ought to have an expectation mm. uh, to do mighty things. I remember I just graduated from Bible school, got out of Bible school back to to Ohio where I grew up and we we had this group in the church I grew up in, it was Church of the Brethren, so I went and spent the summer and that summer, there was a, they had a young adult group called SID, S-Y-D, Single Young Dunkards. Because, <laughs> Dunkards. Uh, yeah, the Church of the Brethren, yeah, they're, yeah. They, they're yeah. three times forward in baptism. Name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. So we were all <laughs> gathered in this... Uh, yeah, that uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever it was, it stuck on me. I got baptized at 14. It's It's been good since then. Good um, for you, huh? Yeah. Uh, but we're on, we all got in this van, and we're headed out, and, uh, and I started saying uh, like this. I said, God's going to move this weekend. And uh, I started saying to these kids, you know, and they knew none, none of them's filled with the Holy Ghost. None of them really knows things about spiritual things. And they, I said, you know, there's angels riding right with us down the road in this van. You can't see them, but uh, I brought several with me, and there's there's angels riding on. And there, I remember this one girl. She just bug eyed. She's just thinking, angels. Outside, of, I say, yeah, and God is going to pour out His Spirit this weekend, and and we went white water rafting. We went down to Ohio Pile, their uh, place just uh, east mm. of Pittsburgh, and uh, and I kept saying, God is going to do amazing things this weekend, and so we went white water rafting. We had a night uh, around the campfire, and then it was the last afternoon. We were all going to leave. It was like a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon. I don't know which that was the first time I went down a water slide water slides had barely been invented yeah and they had a water slide at that place but uh, anyway uh, I don't know exactly what happened but uh, I, I had kept saying God is gonna move God is gonna do amazing things and so they had a little prayer and someone said let's pray before we leave and and someone started weeping and said I, I'm not right with God I need to get born again hmm. this has happened a couple times in my life and uh, I started talking to him about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I said, well, you can be filled with the Spirit and speak in tongues. And uh, so we laid hands on several. Several people got born again that, that afternoon. Several people got filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, one young girl, I found out later, Larry Mills is a missionary to Turkey. I don't know if you've heard of Larry or not, but uh, he works out of Ernie Beer's church in Delaware, I think. Uh, but he's been going to Turkey for years. But his wife, Kay Cormany, at that time Kay Cormany, it's Kay Mills now, but uh, I didn't realize it years later. She said, yeah, you remember that weekend? I got filled with the Holy Ghost that weekend. <laughs> and so her and her husband been serving God on the mission field wow. since then. So you, you never know when you, when you speak the word and start decreeing and declaring and believing God, having some expectation like David, uh, and I was thinking about that. You know, he, he may not have been expecting what happened to come to, to pass, but he was expecting God to do something. He wanted to see something. He wanted to see some uh, 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 some action. Yeah, that's why that, 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 that the apostles, when the time of persecution, actually the greatest miracles always happened when there was a, a pressing, there was a, a, a pressing and yeah. a persecution and attack by the government and the people in power, demonic activities. That's when the, the greatest miracles happened. Yeah. And they prayed, instead of just backing down, they prayed, Lord, that you would grant us yeah. that with all boldness, yeah. Yeah. that we will speak your word, that you will stretch, stretch your mighty your hand. hand to heal that signs and, signs and wonders and miracles 
Mm. Healing will be done through the name of your holy <laughs> child, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting, it shook. It shook. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. they were all filled with the yeah. Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God yeah. with boldness. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> for and, and I want to prophesy this to you, Pastor Dave, yeah, is in those prayer meetings, God is laying down a pr blueprint for that which I would have you to do and where I would have you to go and what I would have you to accomplish. So understand the, the, the plan must be laid in prayer. The plan must be laid and the, the blueprint spread out through prayer. And I'll go on the wings of those prayers and accomplish great and mighty things. I received Amen. that. Amen. That's a confirmation. <laughs> I'm telling you, last weekend, this last weekend, uh, I visited my son in Michigan and I attended some special meetings they had there. Man, I have not been, I have not received, this is the second prophecy. I have not been prophesied over, like just really, other than an encouraging word here and there, yeah. you know, the Lord being, you know, love you. And uh, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but almost over ten years, and the the message that was given to me a prophetic word on on Monday we had a prayer and fasting after yeah. the meeting, almost the same thing that uh, the Lord had just had you wow. say. This is like citrus. There is more, but the meat of it about the prayer. Yeah, and uh, I know now. We must raise up a generation of prayer, yeah, an, an yeah. army, because yeah, we, we we have to do it. This whole thing happening, we just can't sit there and say, "Oh, what else are they going to say? What else the governor is going to give out?" Yeah, and I was just think <laughs> I was thinking that you know, and and I'll I'll, I'll be you know just frank. I, I I've been kind of discouraged and disgruntled with this whole scenario, but like you've said, and like we've been saying. This may be God's greatest opportunity if in the midst of this ugly situation we find ourselves in, that we expect God to move in a mighty way. Where, where are we going to expect the things. miracles? The miracles in the Bible, whether in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, let's get all the miracles that, we, that encourage us and inspire us. Yeah. Get every time... The greatest miracle of splitting the Red Sea. The, the armies, they are coming to <laughs> They're kill. right on their tail, yeah. Bring each one. All yeah. the miracles that we believe in, there was a time where they challenged their lives on the line. Yeah. Pressure. Pressure, <laughs> persecution. So yeah. the COVID is another opportunity Oh, for yeah. us to demostrate it's the a, power of God and the presence of God, instead of being divided, you know, and who frustrated, is frustrated and, frustrated yeah, and all that. that stuff. So I think it's it's our turn. We just get in the prayer, we agree together. That's yeah. why we have to have more corporate praying yeah. with yeah. people with like mind, Amen. pray in the spirit, Amen. believe, speak the word, and then let him speak to us. And then yeah. we go do what he said we should yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and like that, that prophecy, God's laying out a blueprint. God's laying out the plan exactly. so we can go ahead and walk in it exactly. and fulfill what he has for and, us. And I believe God is not done with uh, raising up uh, more or Roberts to start institutions like that. Yeah, yeah, you know? amen. And the, uh, the other day, we, we, um, in that one of those meetings, uh, we were praying and fasting, and... Uh, and this prophet, he said, we need to now stop. We need to pray for all Roberts University. Because the Lord wants to raise up this ministry, mm. that school, to a place where it was called to. So we started interceding for all. Please, he said, please pray for all Roberts University. Please, because God is stirring up that anointing that originally was in there. Yeah. And we need more schools and more leaders to train. Even if Amen. you train three people or five, sometimes we think we have to raise up big institutions like that. Yeah. We don't have to. We have, we, as long as we have disciples ready yeah. to be impacted. Oh, some of the greatest uh, men uh, that I've read after have come out of just small little Bible studies that uh, that God raised up. You know, I'm thinking about Reese House. He had a Bible school and prayer prayer meeting. Um, uh, Howard Carter had a had a Bible school, and it wasn't necessarily 
thousands of people that came to him. You know, they were just a small group of, you know, Brother Andrew came out of these little faith-filled Bible schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reinhard Bonnke, I don't know all of his history, but I know he came out of just a small little Pentecostal church in, now look in like Germany. You know this guy who has a braid, uh, who is this guy that, that preaches, uh, he goes around he has this. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, this this. Uh, Todd White. Yeah, Todd, Todd White. White. See, the, the thing, he came the, out of this church over here where my son-in-law go. Yeah. yeah. In York. In, in, yeah. in, and then uh, the guy, the pastor who actually trained him to walk in the power of God, he's in York. More, yeah. I think his last name is more something. More Cashman. You know, um, yeah. There's a there's another older guy there that he trains him. But in York County. Yeah. And people we think. It has to be a super someplace somewhere, and now he's shaking the world. Yeah, you know, and, and he was not even a, a school that is organized big or <laughs> anything. You know, even the pastor refused oh, yeah. to be to be on YouTube. They they just take they just disobey me. Just take his messages yeah. and they put on YouTube. We gotta do. I think the generation is crying out. Train yeah. me. Amen. Look at your place up there. Yeah. yeah. Man, imagine just take all these kids and just throw out there in the in the <laughs> Yeah, let them walk through the wood and pray in, in the spirit. Yeah. I, need, I need to bring a bunch of them, just yeah. drop them out of Amen. nowhere. Amen. Bring the them mountains. on up. It's like bring if you can survive up. over there, then yeah. we'll let you prophesy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, way home, huh? <laughs> we got uh, we got another fifty minutes or so. We're gonna take a short break, uh, yeah. five or ten minutes, and we'll be back with you. Uh, so I know there's a few of you on there listening. Well, I, I hope there is. I don't see anyone right there. But but uh, let us know you're there. If you're if you're on, comment. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we'd like to to answer those uh, or just do what we can there. But uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back uh, with you in a little bit. Amen. Sweeter also than honey and the honey. 